Hi, Gordon Palmer here, Claremont Calling, coming out on Friday the 18th of February 2022. And it's, it's following on from the one from a couple of weeks ago. I hope you had a chance to look at that one. I think half a dozen that folks from uh, the Fellowship at Claremont were talking about their devotional lives and in particular how they looked at the scriptures and, and maybe some prayer organisations. We're just going to quite quickly um, today run through some of the, the options and there'll be addresses and links um, on the on the screen as we as we go which I hope will be able to point you and, and, and where you might find some of the things that are really just so important and it's it is important Jesus after he was baptized by John the, John the Baptist and there had been that word from heaven this is my son and I'm pleased you think well, he's ready to go straight into mission, straight into ministry. Where's the action? But in fact, what we're told is that he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness there for 40 days. It, it, was, a, it was a retreat, really. It was a devotional exercise, a, a big one, for he had a big ministry in front of him. And we know that he spent time communing with God. And we, we also know that he was really... Um, dealing with the scriptures as well, because when at the end of that time Satan uh, tempted him with three specific temptations, each time Jesus responded with a verse from the Bible, each time a, a verse from what we now have as the early chapters in Deuteronomy, it seems that's where Jesus had been focusing his reading his or his thinking about, about scripture. Jesus needed to pray. Jesus needed to know the scriptures and, and read the scriptures. Surely we don't think we could do better than him. So that's uh, why it's important. And we, as I say, mentioned, uh, some folks mentioned them uh, options a couple of weeks ago. Uh, one of them was uh, the Lectio 365, um, which is something that you have to download onto your, your phone. Um, and again, information on the screen there about where, where you can get that. We recommend that. It's a, there's devotions for the morning and for, for the evening. Uh, a short time and you can either read or indeed have it played and, and you can listen. But um, <clears throat> as well as that, um, I think it was Martin mentioned some of the books that he used and the uh, New Testament series of for everyone, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, for everyone, right through to Revelation for everyone, and, um, and the Old Testament books as, as well. They are much, I think, to be recommended, particularly, I think, the New Testament ones by, by Tom Wright. Um, and the daily sections, daily readings, they, there's a bit of the chapter and then maybe two or three pages on that reading before it goes on to the next one. They're not dated, so you can do them anytime. You can start in December, you can start in May, you can start in February. Um, now, some for some folks, you might find these um, books a bit costly. So if I was wanting to start and I wasn't sure how I was starting and not sure I can and lash out lots of money. Well, there's a number of Bible reading notes available. Our daily bread comes um, available free of charge. There's a link there. It can come in a booklet format like this. Or sometimes the booklet, if you want it, you can get it with a, with a larger print. Um, our daily bread also comes um, available by email or to your telephone. Then there's organisations who are doing a lot to promote Bible reading, to encourage the church in, in the Bible reading. One of these is the Bible Reading Fellowship, and they produce a, a, a range of different options. And the best way to find out about these is to go to the website and they've got the Bible Reading Notes at a Glance page where they'll tell you what the different readings are. And these also are available as apps and, and can, be, can be downloaded from them. And as well as the Bible Reading Fellowship, there's the Scottish Bible Society. They again produce material for small groups or for personal devotions, offering not only different parts of the Bible, but also different approaches. They have different styles of, of reading, some conversational, some more meditating on it. And again, really recommend you have a, have a look at the via the link there, and, and see what, what is available in these different styles. Scripture Union too will produce things like Daily Bread and Encounter with God and also have some readings specifically for, for different age groups. Again, worth finding out. 
You see, it's not all the one thing. It's not all the same to go about it. People are recognising that there's different styles, different ways to read the scriptures. They're recognising that different things are appropriate for, for different age groups as well. Another of the groups, and we've got some stuff here from them, or another of the publishing companies, is the Good Book Company. They have a number of um, daily Bible readings uh, available again in different formats, books or apps, or they have notes. They also have a, a Facebook group where you can go on and share with others who are reading the, the notes at the same time. Got here a couple of the notes that they use for, for younger people. Their series is called Discover. And as well as the Bible reading notes for your daily devotions, they produce a number of uh, booklets, um, studies for individuals or groups. A couple of them here and, and the Old Testament books of Ezekiel and, and Zechariah. And then there's one of, on here by Tim Chester for the, the Apostles' Creed. Um, don't just have to repeat it on a Sunday. Find out a wee bit more about what's there and, and why it's there. And again, there's a, a website for details to where you can get material from the, the Good Book Company. I was speaking to Karen earlier on today and, and she was um, recommending this book by Andy Flanagan. It's 120 where it says experiential devotionals. That is, what he's driving at is, is how do we actually get to grips with the scripture and let it really sink into our lives? Um, so... Randomly opening it at day 37, it's about air conditioning, it says that's a title, but there's some different readings of different parts of scriptures, reflections, there's space for your, for your notes, so that you don't just read the Bible and then go away and forget about it. Um, there's a verse in the book of James about that, just saying, what's the point? <laughs> what's the point? It's about trying to apply it. So uh, Andy Flanagan has, has done this, as I say, experiential de devotion. And, and in similar um, vein, um, something I've used on and off for, for a time is the message done, Eugene Peterson's book, done in the, this format, Solo. And the solo is using a way of reading scripture uh, called Lectio Divina. And again, just opening it at a random page. Um, the sections are that we... We read, think, pray, and live. We read the passage, we think about what it is, we, we pray over, and then there's some way that, that that's to affect the, the living that comes as a consequence of, of reading that. So that's another one that's, that's available and much to be recommended. A number of years ago um, in Claremont, we used the Essential 100 book by Whitney Cunningham. He came and spoke at one of our morning services as well. He sat down and worked out, if I was to just say in 100 readings, what's the best way to get a, a picture of the whole of Scripture? What 100 passages would I choose? And he reflected it and it put them down together in this book of um, Essential 100, and it's become very popular um, the world over, just giving that overview of, of Scripture, um, just sort of doing, again, a daily section of something to read, something to reflect. And again, he talks about how we apply it to our lives and how we pray. Well, that's a run through just some of the things that, that are available. There's a whole wealth of material and indeed, it's one of the sadnesses for me, I think, in our time that we don't make much use sometimes of what we have. Lots of people have Bibles at home that are never open. That's People in the persecuted uh, church elsewhere in the world just desperate sometimes to get a page of scripture or <laughs> two pages of scripture. Um, a few hundred years ago, people were getting burned at the stake and burned alive just for trying to put the Bible into the, the ordinary language so that folks can have it. Folks working hard today like uh, Martin Robb um, who came from Claremont and working with uh, Wycliffe Bible translators in Hungary just trying to get much needed and much loved scripture out to folks who are desperate for it and we've got so much maybe we could do a bit more with what we have and what we've not been using. I'm going to try and see if we can get a number of these things um, available in the coming weeks on the church bookstall um, as well. And so keep an eye out for that. 
And finally, one other book which doesn't have anything in it. Nothing, it doesn't have to be one exactly like this, but you know, an empty book, keep beside your Bible, read it, jot down a question or two, jot down something you've realised for the first time. Very, very helpful. There's no rules about it because there's no rules except read the scriptures and pray. God has commanded that. Jesus exampled it. And God wants to know and love all of us better. Hope you can follow up some of the links that we've shown. Hope you can have a look at the church book stall in coming weeks. And Claire McCollum will be back in a couple of weeks' time. Thanks very much.